Well, hello there folks and welcome back to The Whiskey Friend with me, Alan. It's another list. The first time I've tackled this list, I'm going to go for my five favourite peated whiskies in 2022. 2022 was a good year for The Whiskey Friend because I tackled a lot more peat than I'd ever tackled in previous years. So I really, really dived into it. I dived in at the deep end, dug it in, I tried as much as I could. So I've managed now to go through and I've sat down. It's been a tough, tough list for me to put together, guys, because it's peated. And it was a tough one and I've managed to get through it. I've got a couple of honourable mentions I'm going to dive in first before I dive into the list. And these ones could be on anybody's list, guys, and I'm pretty sure they will be on people's lists. But they've just missed out on mine this year. So I'm going to do the first honourable mention. I'm going to go over to the Tobermory Distillery. I'm going to head to Lechig, so it's the Lechig 10, wonderful, wonderful stuff, 46.3% ABV, it's uh, non-chill filtered, and I believe there's no colour in it guys, it doesn't say anything about colour on it, but it's it it's, doesn't really matter to me to be fair with this one, the whiskey's that good, it's rich, it's smoky, it's spicy, real, real quality, value for money, ticks all the boxes again there it comes in it's under 40 pounds guys if you're lucky enough to get it around that market at that price point i don't know what it is in global markets but here in the uk it's around about the kind of 40 pound mark which is phenomenal whiskey prices so in this climate it's great stuff so that's my first honorable mention lechig tim next one up this one has made my list guys is the top in the top five whiskies of, of the year whiskies in previous years. This year it hasn't even made the top five in peated whiskies. So I'm amazed. But I did try a lot more peated whiskey this year. And it just got edged out. And it's this one guys. We're heading to Kilcarran. Look. Kilcarran heavily peated. Missed out. A wee bit more sherry this year in it. And, and, and I'm amazed it's got, it's got more sherry in it. And it's just still missed out. Uh, this one's coming in at a whopping 57.4% ABV, non-chill filtered and natural colour. All the stuff that we crave for. Price point is still under £50. It's one of these kind of Campbelltown malts that I don't think it's really that difficult to pick up. If you wanted one, one of these, they're easy enough. Particularly in the UK, in global markets, again, I'm not sure. But certainly here, you could pick these up easily enough. So yes, I'm amazed it's missed out. I'm not going to get into all the tasting notes, guys. I will pop links above if you want to check out any of the... I have reviewed all of the whiskies that I'm going to do, so there is a full review on all of them. I'm going to pop as many cards up as I can. If I can get a card up, I'll pop a link on to the very end of the video. So it might keep you to the end, and hopefully you can stay on. If you want to check out some of these videos in more detail, you can check them out there. So, yeah, second honourable mention, Kale Karen, heavily peated, back six. Okay, so... This is the third honourable mention, folks. I'm really, really... I tried my best to get this one on. I've been saving it all year to try and get it on because it was the very first video that I viewed in 2022. I started a little peat series right at the very beginning of the year and this was the first one up. And to be fair, it blew me away as soon as I tried that first one. And it helped me get through that series because it just kept me going and kept me going. It started me off on a footing and I'm just a wee bit disappointed that it just missed out on the top five. But it is, it's the Port Charlotte 10, heavily peated, 50% ABV, non-chill filtered natural colour. Wonderful, wonderful stuff and I'm amazed that I couldn't get this one in. So hopefully what that's going to tell you is the five that did make it are five whoppers. So... Let's dive into the five whoppers. Okay, where are we going to go? Number five on the list, right? This is the fifth best peated whiskey that I tried in 2022. If you're a regular to the channel, I'm going to give you a little clue. It's the Springbank of Speyside. Love this distillery. I'd love to shout more about this distillery and hopefully this whiskey is going to help me do that. So I'm going to head to the Ben Romack Contrast Series and it's the Peat Smoke. Look at that. It's natural colour. It's 46% ABV. And it's non-chill filtered. Big round of applause for Ben Romack. And I hope that means to continue. Because I'd love to do more of this Ben Romack whiskies. 
I'd love to see it more at the ABVs. And if this is a sign of the quality, folks, this is absolutely wonderful. It's heavily peated malted barley. It's got a phenol level of PPMs of 42 PPMs. And it's all first fill X bourbon barrels. So wonderful, wonderful stuff. It doesn't have an age statement on it, but just, guys, it ticks a box because it's got a vintage on it. This was distilled in 2009 and bottled in 2020. So absolutely fantastic. Ben Romack has finally ticked all the boxes, which is wonderful. This whiskey, again, though, it's it's fragrant, it's floral, it's, it's fruity, it's apricots, it's white fruit, a little bit of tropical fruit. It's got that smoky background all the way through it. It's lots of vanillas, lots of toffees, lots of honeys. Beautifully balanced with all that honey, spice, toffee, fruitiness. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And price point, guys, 50 to £55 pounds in the UK. Top, top quality, first fill barrel, bourbon barreled whiskey. All the presentation matched and they can still get it and run about the 50 to £55. Pounds. Absolutely phenomenal. Quality wise, it's fizzy, sherbetty, beautiful, beautiful stuff for me. Loved it. Loved every minute of it. So that's the number five on the list, guys. So let's gonna head over to Isla for number four. We're going to hit the Kilhoman distillery on Isla. We're on the sherry now. So I've got the Lock Gorm 2021 version of the Lock Gorm. It's 100% sherry matured. It's, it's a, a maturation of 24 sherry whiskies. Uh, yeah, 24 sherry butts. And it's matured for a minimum of nine years. So absolutely fantastic. 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural colour. Yes, it's a non-age non statement. Fantastic. That may be a theme coming up today, guys. So yeah, it's sherry. Colour-wise, as you can see, I'm doing really, really well with it. I'm getting to the bottom of the bottle here. Guys, this is this is sherry. It's big sherry. It's dark fruit, raisins, figs, sultanas, fudgy, toffee, sticky fudge. It's it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. And it's got that smoky element all the way through it. It's got a real smoke blanket all over it. So it's a wonderful balance between the sherry and the smoke. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Nice little hint of spice in there as well. So it's really, really nice. Dark berries, lots of berry fruit, lots of sherry influences because, yeah, it's a sherry whiskey. But quality wise, guys, money wise, it's probably on the price end. It's around about 80. I think I paid about 80 pounds for it. 75 or 80 pounds. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. There's still 17,000 bottles produced. I've not got round to trying the 2022 version yet. If anyone's tried it, guys, because I'm, I'm I'm holding back because I'm enjoying this one so much. So I even tried maybe thinking, will I replace this one with the same bottle or will I go for the 2022? So, guys, if anybody's watching and who's tried the 2021 and the 2022, dive into the comments. Let me know, should I stick with this one or is the 2022 better? And in the, in the comments, folks, let me know. I'll look forward to that. So, yeah, that's number four on the list. Kill home and lock gone. Well, let's see what we've got number three on the list, folks. Let's move over. Where are we heading to this time? We're kind of dotting around. We're heading to Campbelltown. We're heading to Glen Scotia. Campbelltown Festival, Malts Festival 2022, limited edition, peated PX cask finish, eight year old age statement, non chill filtered, natural colour. 56.5% ABV, so it's a whopper. Guys, don't be fooled by the 8-year-old age statement. It's wonderful, wonderful whiskey, and it doesn't drink like it's an 8-year-old, and it doesn't drink like it's 56.5% ABV. So it's wonderful, wonderful stuff. This one is um, heavily peated, and it's from First Fill X Bourbon Barrels, and it's spent a 12-month finishing period in PX Hogsheads. So wonderful, wonderful stuff. Love it when it's got, love my peat when it has something in it. Wine cask, PX, sherry casks, anything like that. It really, really hits home with a whiskey friend. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I tend to like it that way. Uh, this one is a beautiful, wonderful balance of smoke, treacle and spice. A little bit of vanilla in there, a 
little bit of honey in there. That Campbelltown funk's there. It's that wonderful, funky Campbelltown. You would know it would be a Campbelltown. I don't know if you'd quite know if it would be a Glen Scotia, but it's definitely got that funkiness. It's it's lovely and coastal. It's it's salty. It's got beautiful outdoor notes. It's that earthy. It's got a wonderful balance of all of that, guys. It's earthy. And in the air, it's got lots and lots. Because of the PX, it's got lots of plenty of berry fruit in there as well. So there's lots and lots going on with this one. At the time of recording, guys, I picked it up. You're probably thinking you won't be able to get it now. But I, when I sat down to record this, I could go on and buy it. I paid 55 to £60 pounds for it, I think. I think at the minute it's gone up a little bit. It's probably that 60 to 65 here in the UK. Not too sure of global markets. But yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. As you can see, beautiful whiskey. This is the second bottle. I was lucky enough to have a third one in the stash. Uh, so that's number three on the list, guys. We're on to the big two now. Let's head on to the big top two. Where are we heading now? So we're heading back onto the mainland Scotland. We're heading up to the Highlands, Western Highlands, all the way up there in Ardnamurkin. We're heading to the Ardnamurkin Distillery. This is the Ardnamurkin Cast Strength, the AD02.22. Yes, I know, guys, there's a new one out. I've not quite got around to picking up the new one yet. I've been enjoying this one so much. I picked this up. I was up and I paid the Highlands a visit in August with a Dram Yankee. And I managed to pick this one when I was up there. Uh, tried it on the day. Picked up a bottle. Uh, brought it back and I've been drinking it ever since. But I'm in a, a wee bit of dilemma. I'm enjoying this one that much. But is the, the latest cast strength as good as this one? Should I buy another one of these? Or should I go and buy the new cast strength, guys? Same thing, if you've tried both of these, dive into the comments, folks, and let us know which one I should go for. Give me some advice. Give me some help. So, yes, that is the whiskey. It's beautiful whiskey. It's it's sherbetty. It's fizzy. It's, it's floral. It's nutty. It's lemon. It's orange. It's orange marmalade. It's, it's shortbread, it's biscuity, it's briny, it's vegetal, vegetal, lovely smoke in there as well. This is probably class a wee bit more, compared to some of the others I've done, this is a wee bit more on the light smoke side, but it's beautifully balanced with that smoke in there as well. I think I do believe that the new one has more peat involved in the new one. I find it hard to believe because I think this one here, was a, it was fifth, there was a maturation of 50 casks in this one. 40 were peated, 10 were unpeated, and of that breakdown, 45 were ex-bourbon and 5 were sherry casks. It just, it just missed out on top spot, but guys, any given day, depending on what day I recorded the video, this could have been the number one slot. It's just been pipped today. It was uh, Even when I sat down to record it, I still quite hadn't made my mind up whether it was going to nick it or not. But yeah, number two, after working cast strength, we're heading back to Isla. I've I really got into this distillery way way back at the beginning of twenty twenty two. One of them was in the honourable mentions, but I I just dived in and I have to I'm just not to mess around, guys. We're heading back to Isla, we're heading back to Port Charlotte, and it's one of the cask experimental series from the Brook Laddie Distillery. It's yeah the Port Charlotte range. It's the OLC one two thousand and ten. It's a uh, nine-year-old aged in oak casks. It's coming in at a whopping 55.1% ABV. Natural colour, non-chill filtered. Lots of dark chocolate, lots of peach smoke, lots of citrus fruits. It's nutty, it's, it's peppery, it's spicy. There's tobacco in there. It's earthy, it's cit lots of citrus fruit, loads and loads of chocolate. I have reviewed a few of them. See, I'm going to try and pop links up above, guys, if you want to go and watch them in more detail. This is the Oloroso cask. I think I've done the Sauternes, the SC, which is the Sauternes. I've got the MC, which I've not cracked open yet, which I believe is Madeira cask. And then with the MRC01, which I have done. Um... Just lost me in a minute what that one is. But yeah, I've tried a few of them. There is a P P A C as well, which I've managed to pick up a sample of and I've not quite got around to picking a bottle up of that yet. So so yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed these wonderful, wonderful whiskies. 
Loving everything that Port Charlotte's putting out. The presentation, the bottles, the tins, the tubes, everything. Lots of detail, the transparency. Just wonderful, wonderful whiskey. It's so complex and it's just engaging. And, and you don't necessarily need to be a... <coughs> I think if you don't need to be a peat lover, but that combination of peat and sherry is just... That Oloroso just really, really hits home with me. And it just hits the spot. And, in fact, I'm just going to have a wee quick sip now. Wow, look at that. Smoky, sherried. Wow. Really, really wonderful nose. Great set of legs there as well. Colours wonderful, all natural. Let's taste it. My, my, my. Oh, that's wonderful. Powerful, intense, peaty, spicy, oily. Got wonderful dryness and the arrival, and it's very, very mouth watering very quickly. Wow. What a whiskey. Guys, that's my five. Oh, five are wonderful. Even the three on row mentions. On any given day, that that smoke now that finish is just super super long, meaty, smoky, earthy, coastal, wonderful, real real nice. But yeah, any one of those guys could have made the list. It's my first list that I've done of peated whiskies. Dive into the comments, guys. Let me know what you think. Have you tried them? Do you recommend them? Wow. That's it. Until the next one. Not sure what list I'm going to do next, but yeah, Whiskey of the Year's coming soon. Is this going to be on Whiskey of the Year? Is it going to be the Whiskey of the Year? We never know, but I'm Alan. I'm the Whiskey Friend. Until the next one, as always, pleasures in the sharing. Don't, say, don't forget to send some good whiskey straight down the hatch. Responsibly, of course. See you, folks. Bye-bye.